Emperor A.A. of Han Family background and early life as the Prince of Dingtao Emperor A.A. was born to Liu Kang, Prince of Dingtao Liu Kang, the brother to then reigning Emperor Cheng and son to Emperor Yuan and his concubine consort Ding, in 27 BCE, presumably at Prince Kang's principality roughly modern He's, Shandong. From birth, he was raised by his paternal grandmother, the domineering consort Fu, and not by his mother. Prince Kang died in 23 BC, and the four-year-old prince Xin became the prince of Dingtao. In 9 BC, the feminist 18-year-old prince Xin impressed his uncle Emperor Cheng Wen on an official visit to the capital Chang'an, when he brought three key officials of his principality, his teacher, his prime minister, and the commander of his capital's defense forces to accompany him and cited the proper legal regulations that, in his opinion, required and allowed. He also showed clear understanding of the Confucian classic Xi Jing, further impressing Emperor Cheng. At that time, the sunless Emperor Cheng was beginning to consider making either his younger brother Liu Xing, Prince of Zhongshan Zhongshan Wang Liu Xing, or his nephew Prince Xin his heir. Emperor Cheng became convinced that Prince Xin was more capable, and at the same time, Prince Xin's grandmother consort Fu was endearing herself to Emperor Cheng's wife Empress Xiao Fei and her sister, and Emperor Cheng's favorite consort Xiao Heed, and Emperor Cheng's uncle Wang Zhen with lavish gifts, and so the Xiaos and Wang Zhen both praised Prince Xin as well. Emperor Cheng therefore seriously considered making Prince Xin his heir. In 8 BC, Emperor Cheng summoned several key officials to discuss with him who would be the more proper heir. The majority, perhaps seeing that Emperor Cheng was leaning toward Prince Xin, recommended him citing the general rule of succession, that when one lacked an heir, he should adopt a brother's child to be his own son and heir. One official recommended Prince Xing under the rationale that he was closer in bloodline with the emperor. Emperor Cheng, whose mind was fairly made up, created him crown Prince Xin. In an act praised one as showing humility, Prince Xin declined the honor of living at the crown prince's palace, stating that he was only at the capital to serve Emperor Cheng until Emperor Cheng would produce an heir and that he should stay at the Dingtao mission in the capital. As crown prince, whether Emperor Cheng was formally adopting Prince Xin would quickly become a major controversy. Emperor Cheng viewed his creation of Prince Xin as crown prince as formal adoption, and he believed that Prince Xin was now his son, no longer Prince Kang's. When he created a cousin to be the new Prince of Dingtao to serve as Prince Kang's heir in winter 8 BC, Prince Xin, grateful that his father would continue to be worshipped as an ancestor, submitted a formal note of thanksgiving at which Emperor Cheng was highly offended, believing that Prince Xin should not be grateful any more for whatever is done for his birth father. Emperor Cheng's desire to have Prince Xin act as only his son extended to the arena of Prince Xin's relationship with his grandmother consort Fu and his mother consort Ding. Emperor Cheng decreed, that consort Fu, now Princess Dowager of Dingtao and consort, Ding be required to remain in Dingtao and not be allowed to come to Chang'an to visit Prince Xin. Some time later, Emperor Cheng's mother impressed Dowager Wang, not wanting to continue these harsh regulations, decreed that Princess Dowager Fu be allowed to see Prince Xin under the rationale that she, having raised him, was merely in the role of a wet nurse. Consort Ding, however, would continue to not be allowed to see Prince Xin. Emperor Cheng died suddenly in 7 BC, apparently from a stroke, although historians also report the possibility of an overdosage of aphrodisiacs given to him by Consort Xiao Heed. Crown Prince Xin ascended the throne as Emperor Ai. Impressed Dowager Wang, as his step-grandmother and legal grandmother became Grand Impress Dowager, and Impress Xiao became Impress Dowager. He created consort Fu, the daughter of his grandmother, Princess Dowager Fu's cousin Fu Yan Fu Yan, impress. As emperor, early reign optimism, Emperor Ai aged 20 at his ascension, quickly ended Emperor Cheng's practice of delegating imperial authorities to his uncles and cousins of the Wang clan and appeared diligent in his rule. 
He also reduced spending greatly. Both the officials and the people thought that after the reigns of the indecisive Emperor Yuan and the impulsive and lavish spending Emperor Cheng, there would finally be a capable emperor. In 7 BC, under Emperor I's auspices, a major proposal to reduce involuntary servitude was made by several officials princes would be limited to 200 servants, marquesses and princesses to 100 servants, and other nobility and commoners to 30 servants, and that servants would be set free after a service of three years. However, after the proposal was leaked, many servant owners pushed to have the proposal tabled, and Emperor Ai only issued a limited version of the proposal freeing servants over age 50. Optimism shattered. The issue of the roles of Princess Dowager Fu and Consort Ding and what honor, if any, to posthumously bestow on Emperor Ai's father Prince Kang, however, would quickly again erupt into a major controversy. Initially, Grand and Press Dowager Wang decreed that Princess Dowager Fu and Consort Ding see him periodically every ten days. However, Princess Dowager Fu quickly began to visit her grandson every day, and she insisted that two things be done, that she receive an Empress Dowager title, and that her relatives be granted titles, like the Wangs. Grand and Press Dowager Wang sympathetic of the bind that Emperor Ai was in, first granted Prince Kang the unusual title of Emperor Gong of Ding Tao Ding Tao Gong Huang, and then, under the rationale of that title, granted Princess Dowager Fu the title Empress Dowager Gong of Ding Tao Ding Tao Gong Huang Tai Ho, and consort Ding the title Empress Gong. Several members of the Fu and Ding clans were created Marquesses. Grand Empress Dowager Wang also ordered her nephew Wang Meng, the commander of the armed forces, to resign and transfer power to the Fuss and the Dings. Emperor Ai declined and begged Wang Meng to stay in his administration. Several months later, however, Wang Meng would come into direct confrontation with now Empress Dowager Fu. At a major imperial banquet, the official in charge of seating placed Empress Dowager Fu's seat next to Grand Empress Dowager Wang's. When Wang Meng saw this, he rebuked the official and ordered that Empress Dowager Fu's seat be moved to the side, which drew great ire from Empress Dowager Fu, who refused to attend the banquet. To soothe her anger, Wang Meng resigned, and Emperor Ai approved his resignation. After Wang Meng's resignation, the Wangs gradually and inexorably began to lose their power. At Empress Dowager Fu's behest, the Fuss and the Dings were installed in their place. Empress Dowager Fu was not satisfied with what she saw was her inferior title as only Empress Dowager, not Grand Empress Dowager, and with the qualifier of Ding Tao. Several key officials who opposed her move were reduced to commoner status without any other fault including the Prime Minister Kong Wang Kong Wang and the Prime Inspector Shi Dan Shi Dan two of the top three officials of the administrator. The third one, Empress Dowager Fu's cousin Fu Zai Fu Zai, who also opposed Empress Dowager Fu's actions, notwithstanding his relationship with her, was removed from his position and sent back to his march. In 6 BC, Empress Dowager Fu would further display her power and, at the same time, caused the people to be even more disappointed in Emperor Ai. Emperor Ai's cousin Liu Jizi Liu Jai Zai, the prince of Zhangshan Prince Zing's son, had a congenital heart disorder, and his grandmother Feng Yuan, the princess dowager, cared for his treatment and often worshipped gods to pray for his healing. Emperor Ai, on hearing his cousin's illness, sent imperial physicians along with his attendant Zhang Yu Zhang Yu to go to Zhangshan roughly modern Beiading, Hebei to treat Prince Jizi. Zhang, however, was himself afflicted with a psychiatric condition probably bipolar disorder, and when he got to Zhangshan, he suddenly, in a rage, left there and returned to Chang'an. Once he did and was ordered to explain his conduct, he made up a false reason that he had discovered that Princess Dowager Feng was using witchcraft to curse Emperor Ai and Empress Dowager Fu. Empress Dowager Fu and Princess Dowager Feng were romantic rivals when they were both consorts to Emperor Yuan, and Empress Dowager Fu decided to use this opportunity to strike at Princess Dowager Feng. 
She sent a eunuch she lie she lie to serve as investigator, and she tortured a good number of Princess Dowager Feng's relations, including her sister Feng Zai Feng Zai and her sister-in-law Junjai Junjai, some to death, but still could not build a solid case against Princess Dowager Feng. She lie decided to show Princess Dowager Feng, who was actually behind the investigation, by referring to an incident in which then consort Feng defended Emperor Yuan against a bear which had broken loose. Princess Dowager Feng, realizing that Empress Dowager Fu was behind the investigation, went back to her palace and committed suicide. In total, 17 members of the Feng clan died as a result of the investigations. This was immediately viewed as a political case, and officials and the people all became disappointed in Emperor Ai. In 5 BCE, Empress Dowager Fu would finally get what she wanted. Emperor Ai removed the qualification of Ding Tao from his father's posthumous title, thus making him simply Emperor Gong, and then gave his grandmother a variation of the Grand Empress Dowager title, Dite Tai Hu Dai Tai Tai Hu, compared to Grand Empress Dowager Wang's title, Tai Huang Tai Hu Tai Huang Tai Hu, and his mother a variation of the Empress Dowager title, Dite. That year, the new Empress Dowager Ding died. During these years, other than the palatial infighting, what plagued Emperor Ai's administration not unlike how it plagued his uncle Emperor Cheng's administration, was the general situation, where good proposals would be made to Emperor Ai, and then he would approve of them personally but not take any actual actions on them. Further, he was harsh in his punishments of officials who disagreed with him including, but not limited to, the issue of his grandmother and mother's titles. He would often backtrack in these punishments as well after some time, which also made him appear indecisive. He would also quickly promote officials that he saw as capable and honest and then, as soon as that capability or honesty offended him in some way, demote them. His temper might have been related to the fact that he was also constantly ill, although the nature of the illness is not known. The Rise of Dong Xian Circa 4 BC, Emperor Ai began to favor the minor official Dong Xian, and historians largely believe that they had a homosexual relationship. In 44, both men were married, but that would not have been seen as conflicting with a homosexual love affair, as it is typical for Chinese men of the time to have multiple sexual relationships. Ai came from a long line of emperors, all married, of course, with male companions listed in their official histories. Ai bestowed honors on Dong at a rate which alarmed the court. A 45 Dong and his wife moved into the palace, and Dong's sister became an imperial consort. Dong's father was made an acting Marquess Guan Nei Hu. Emperor Ai also ordered that her residence as luxurious as an imperial palace be built for Dong. All who opposed these honors for Dong were severely punished. In 3 BCE, against opposition by his Prime Minister Wang Jia Wang Jia, Emperor Ai created Dong the Marquess of Gaon. The following year, the Prime Minister submitted a report to Emperor Ai in which he urged that the honors bestowed on Dong be curbed. This report was carefully worded to appear to be looking out for Dong. It warned that Dong might suffer the same fate of Emperor Wen's favorite Deng Tong Deng Tong, who starved to death after his assets were confiscated by Emperor Wen's heir, or of Emperor Wu's favorite Han Yan Han Yan, who was executed by Empress Dowager Wang after being accused of improperly assuming imperial style. Later in 2 BC, when Wang Jia opposed the expansion of Dong's march, Emperor Ai had him accused falsely of crimes and forced him to commit suicide. Later that year, Dong was made the commander of the armed forces at age 22 and effectively the most powerful official in the administration. Several members of the Dong clan became important officials as well, displacing the fuss and the dings after Grand Empress Dowager Fu died in 2 BC. Death Emperor Ai died in 1 BCE. It is not clear what the exact cause of death was, but he appeared to succumb to illnesses, from which he had always suffered. On his deathbed, Ai ordered that his throne be passed on to Dong Xian, but this was ignored by imperial counselors. 
The grand impressed dowager acted quickly to seize his seal and to take power back from Dong Xian, reinstating Wang Meng as the regent. Dong Xian and his wife committed suicide. Emperor Ai would officially be succeeded by his cousin, Prince Jizi, as Emperor Ping, but this was merely a pretext for Wang Meng to seize the throne nine years later. Emperor Ai's abuse of power, first influenced by his grandmother and then by his love for Dong, caused the people and the officials to yearn for the return of the Wangs. Era names, Sira names, Sira names, Sira names, Sira names, Jianping Jianping 6 BC 3 BC, Yuan Shu Yuan Shu 2 BC 1 BC, Family, Consorts, Empress Xiaoi of the Fu clan Xiao Ai Huang Hu Fushi, second cousin once removed, personal name Dai Jun Dai Jun, Dai Jun Dai Jun, Jai of the Dong clan, sister of Dong Xian, Ancestry.